lots of options to go buy cheap. Uh, David Bell, you know, yeah. three targets. That, that, that'd that be my biggest target right now on this offense um, to go uh, buy. Well, yeah, because you got to think um, all these guys are going to improve with for their sure. uh, quality of targets come when Watson comes back. And, you know, we talked about this in the offseason with Chubbs obviously on a tear right now, and the opportunities of scoring will be a lot better, and the offensive functionality you think will be better, but maybe the Chubb uh, usage is not quite as high with – maybe getting a little more i mean you just kind of see like look at what they look at what the cowboys are doing right now with cooper rush like all of a sudden you simplify everything you're in kind of close you know with these crooked number games yeah and you you know it's working you kind of go back to the basics which is kind of what cleveland's doing they got they've always had a good run scheme yeah. um and when you get watson in there it just goes into you know chiefs Bills, all that kind of territory where the running back starts being used as an afterthought in most weeks. Um, I also don't think the Chiefs or Bills have a Nick Chubb. They certainly do not. Um, they could, but even they, their running games could, like you just saw this past week, that the, the, the Chiefs were a little bit more balanced in their attack. Um, Having a big lead tends to help. If, if Chubb's getting 12 attempts a game and, you know, and then Hunt's maybe mixing in a little bit more because does a little bit more on passing in passing situations for them or any I guess my question is is there any concern with with how well Chubb's playing right now for when you know Deshaun comes back or? When, yeah no because I think I mean if the offense is better if they're up by 10 14 points then they're not gonna be throwing the ball I feel like we've made so many arguments for why you shouldn't take Chubb I'm done I'm fucking done. I'm not going to try and make an excuse or try and predict some terrible thing to happen to Nick Chubb. He's just a fucking beast. Yeah. He's always been a beast, though. So that, I know, but, but been... I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't say anything negative about Nick Chubb or potentially what I like I just look. I'm done it. denying or uh, withholding back. I, I blew it. I wish I had him on some more teams. Yeah. Um. He's just taking his game to another level and he's you know he's fucking old and rb dog years i don't know that he's really he's always been this good it just uh, it just always ebbs and flows with touchdowns for him because he doesn't really catch a whole lot of balls and now he's been he's been really good to start this season but he's always really good you know really good might be an understatement he's I mean, always really good rushing oh he's wise. the best running running back right like we we one, he had like 134 yards. He still only scored 13 fantasy points because he didn't catch any footballs and didn't score. Like, yeah. it's, he's still awesome. 15. But like, you know, you don't necessarily, and you know, that's not like for for the dude who led the league in rushing, that's not, Yeah. I guess that's kind of what I was 15 towards. points is his floor. I mean, he's got, you know, uh, he's catching some balls. And he's scoring two for nine. So we're gonna we're gonna touchdown regression. You know, he doesn't catch any balls. I just can't maybe, do it, maybe a little bit. Just opportunity regression is more or less what I'm saying. Like, hey, we get into different situations. Like, like I said, Bills, Chiefs, all the guys with really efficient, good quarterbacks seem to just really sh- drift away from that run game. And right now they're out, completely leaning on a run game. I mean, you nailed it. You said maybe it'd be even better for Chubb. With with Brissett there, and I was like, how does that doesn't make any sense? It doesn't really make sense, and the analytical people are basically screaming right now, telling me that I'm an idiot. But you know, well, they're I don't know why. I mean, you nailed it, but uh, they let, they do like to scream and yell and be mad. Uh, so, but I mean, nobody's nobody's moving Chub off Chub, selling high on Chub right now. No. I mean, it's a good time, and it, and, and he is old. So if you if you're trying to rebuild, you know, if you're zero and four or one and three, and you've been looking to try and rebuild, make a move, you know, but like, what's you got to get a fucking lot? You get two first for Chubb. I would do that. That's probably a pretty good return. Would you trade two first for Chubb? No. To make a push? I would See, again, this is my... We talked about this in, like, week one. Like, this is the then problem with Chubb. We've seen it every single year. The fantasy yeah. community puts no value on this man. So, like, right now, if you could get the value for... Hey, listen, if you're a top four team and you got a great roster, there's absolutely no reason in the world you should be trading Chubb. I think this is... We're having a show right here trying to have conversations. 
I think this is a problem with dynasty players, the dynasty community as a whole is everything has to be sold and everybody's always kicking the can down the road to, to build this crazy dynasty team, which they miss on half these picks anyway, and end up just being in this, having being in the same situation over and over and over again, because everybody always tells you that you're not the best team in the league to basically just sell all your assets and rebuild. And sometimes it's not that easy. If you're playing in a league with a bunch of jerk offs, then sure. But you know, if you're playing in a league where people are making good moves and the drafts, you know, there's never a whole lot of great value in the draft and trades are hard to pull off and, and get the huge advantage in trades. You know, it can be unless you want to put in the time and the basically volume shooting that it takes to get good trades done. Cause you're not going to get good trades done by sending a few offers out here and there. You got to be relentlessly trading and trading and tr sending offers, sending offers, sending offers, sending offers. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Right. And a lot of people don't. So like the rebuild isn't going to go as well if you're not going to be relentlessly. And you also have to get, here's nothing you have to do. You have to get lucky sometimes. A hundred percent. You got, you got to hit with some of these draft picks and knock them out of the park. And then also and some of those trades that you were maybe getting kickers or the lower value guys, those lower value guys turn into not, high, not high value not guys. Actual kickers, by the way. Right. Just take the kickers off. Right. Um, but, you know, we do see this with Nick Chubb, him being just, we saw it this year. I mean, just the, just push down below all of these other backs. And it's probably going to, he's not getting younger. It's probably going to continue again this year, even if he has a good season. So that's really was my, the crux of my conversation is, you know, is he, is he maybe playing better because of the situation? And then Deshaun comes back and maybe it dries up a little less than it is right now. And then maybe you should try to get out now if you can. Let's say this. Here's a hypothetical for mm -hmm. you. Your team's two and two. Mm -hmm. You've got a half decent team. You just lost Javante Williams. Do you trade a first for Nick Chubb? If I'll I trade a Chubb, I'll trade a first for Nick Chubb in any pretty much format. Do you trade I mean, a first plus for Nick? Let's say you get a first and a sec, first and a second, or first and a third. I would I, like which run that by me again. Would you trade a first and a second on a middling on a sixth place team that's two and two? You just lost Javante Williams for the year. Um, I mean, maybe because Javante Williams really only had one one great week there. Um, when he caught 11 what was week, week one was, yeah. was pretty solid. And I don't believe he's been great other than that. Um, he's been fine. Um, so yeah. maybe, maybe I would trade. I would probably try to figure out a way to not give the two up. Um, but I was talking values. Right. I would trade. I would trade the first right now on a team to get the opportunity to win. If I think I'm in a situation in the next two years where I could try to win. Um, I, I don't think enough people do take those opportunities because I feel like it's, it's, you know, the scarlet letter, people will shame you because you took a, you took a chance to, sh to shoot your shot on a, on a decent team and add, add a really decent player. And then in two years, you're like, oh, well, you know, there's no value left in that. And maybe Nick Chubb didn't quite perform like you wanted to. And that was a stupid move. It's like, I mean, championships are fleeting and you also have to get lucky to win championships yeah. when you have a pretty good roster. Go in. You know, you got to pay the price of admission. Like, it's pretty tough out there to, to, to win. So if I could trade a first and a third to get Chubb on a team that I felt pretty good about, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset about it. Okay. Um, I think that's fine. You want to you got any closing thoughts over there? Chubb's a man. I didn't even Chubb's in red, man. We spent like 20 minutes <laughs> on him. We got so much more to get to. <laughs> well, I mean, we're just talking Chubb, Chubb for maybe. ET in two seconds. That was one of the chat Chubb questions. for ET. Oh, okay. Chubb. ET and two seconds? Mm-hmm. I mean, the problem with ET right now is... He's doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's not nothing, but it's, it's not... It's pretty much you, nothing. It's pretty much... He's not in your starting lineup. No way. No, he can't um, in your starting lineup. So, in a sense, he's doing nothing. It seems like a good time to buy ETN, so I hate advising trading away ETN right now because I do believe in the talent of ETN, but... If you're ready, to, if you got a pretty good team and, and ETN's killing you right now, then sure, um, I'll, I'll do that. All right, I'm not doing that. It's not all that different than a first and a second. Here know? I am wanting to move off Chubb and I bring it back around. Yeah, really want to stop by here to talk about Miles Sanders. Um, just here to talk about Qualcomm. Um, 
thought he had a really nice game here. He's had a really great season so uh, far. Really has. There, there's, you know, a couple of the first game was nice. Had had a little stumble. I don't know if that was week one or week two, uh, where he wasn't week three he at five point four. Yeah, wasn't super strong, but the other Whoa. two weeks were pretty good. Eleven point um, six. It's okay, I'll take that for where you were drafted him. Yeah, and where oh, you've yeah. drafted a bunch of other dudes around that. Like, yeah. hello, Travis Etienne's replacement. Miles yes, Sanders in my absolutely. lineup every week. If I drafted him and ETN, he's getting the play over him every single week until yeah. further notice. Um, so, you know, you have uh, 67% snaps, 53% route participation in this particular game. I think he's averaging right around 50 or right below 50 for the season. What's that? Route participation, Miles Sanders. Um, but 29.6 fantasy points this week, 27 attempts, 134 yards. Looked great. Uh, they did suffer two offensive line injuries in this game. Yeah, which got him. Lita went down. Got to monitor that. Deuce check. Um, Always doing work. Also caught two or three uh, for 22 yards. Did have a drop. Right now he's RB9 in PPR. That's it? Um, sixth in attempts with 72. Third, Third in yards, yeah, 356. That, yeah. uh, sixth in yards after contact. 11th oh. in... Uh, more missed tackles yeah. forced with 13 um, and fourth and 10 plus yard runs with 11. Now uh, that yards after contact, is that from a rushing standpoint? Yeah. yeah. I assume so. Okay. Um, Cause that's a filter in the rushing. Is that the same PFF. kind of yak? Um, Does that count? I don't know. It's a different kind of yak. It's different more kind of yak. yak, I guess. Um, it's yards after catch, not contact. True. Yeah. It's still yak though. So, yeah. So, I mean, really, what you, what we want to talk about here with Miles Sanders is 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 this a buy sell hold? Um, what are you doing with Miles Sanders? It seems like you know you're kind of maybe getting a little bit of resurgence of some some running backs who were the later round, still kind of p- potential bell cow ish running backs here in in the last week or two. Yeah, um, and Miles Sanders, you know, putting up some good stats for the most part and being a, a pretty decent. Uh, part of your fantasy lineup right now got a got an integral play part of your fantasy lineup yeah rb right now is is bad and we were counting on guys like miles sanders and jacobs and Monty and jk dobbins and all those guys we thought we were that we were going to put our running back position in a good a good place and they quite haven't yet and you know this week we had a week where they did they gave you some production and, and miles like you said has been pretty good all year so if you have miles are you are you buying selling holding what are your what are your thoughts uh, on Miles Sanders, I'm holding unless I can get like a premium price for him, right? Which doesn't seem likely. Like you're not going to get a first for him. No, right? I can't imagine. He's it. 25. He will be an unrestricted free agent right. after this year. I think that's the silver lining. And maybe if you want him to pay a little extra, if you you say there's no chance you're buying Miles Sanders though. I think the person who has him is going to be asking for a lot. It's only a matter of time before he. I mean, why would you want to? Tra- I mean, it leaves in the first after the first series and really crushes you in the crucial moment of your fantasy season. Yeah, I think there. I think the price is just going to be too high to buy him right now. This is the bad week to buy him. Sure, you just missed the five point week, but you know, I have a hard time with Miles Sanders with take lock and not wanting to really. I, I, I got in recently, like last year, and he burned me, and I'm like, this motherfucker. I never liked him. Then I finally bought in because he's cheap enough, and then he fucking fucked me. I feel like going the, get going out of a game early and being hurt. And I feel like the, the Penn State fan club over here, if he's not all in on the buy, yeah. then... I'm just not buying because the price is too high. Right. I mean, I love the player. What's interesting is we like, were kind of... Like or like love? Eh, he's no Saquon. We were kind of yeah. talking, you know... You would take him to a, a Dashboard concert, though. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. Sure. <laughs> if, if uh, we talk about the popularity of these guys, it seems like Miles Sanders could be a guy that if the if once the if the ball gets rolling in the right way, there's still a, a constituent of people who really like yeah Miles Sanders. So that ball could get rolling pretty quickly, getting back in the good graces of the court of public opinion. Um, any thoughts on that? I mean, I just don't know how much higher he can go up from where he's two at twos right, right now. now for Miles. Would I buy him for two twos yeah. right now? Yes. Obviously, we're talking about a, con- so like more a, of a little bit more of a, a contender. Sure, if you have two twenty threes or however you want to spin it, doesn't really matter. I could I could give you a late twenty three and four. J Rob or Miles. Miles. Miles Sanders. That's easy for me. I don't even really like Miles Sanders. 
Yeah, but I think I'd think about it. I don't know if I really want to do that deal for on either side. Jacobs or Miles Sanders? Jacobs. He's got a year younger. Same draft class. Un- undrafted free agent after this year. But he's a year younger. Like he's Jacobs came out super young. Rashad Penny or uh Sanders. 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 Yeah, same same yeah. situation contractually. Clyde or Miles Sanders. Sanders. I think I'd go Clyde. Got a little Chiefs lamp. Got an extra year there in, in, in the Chiefs offense. I think I think the silver lining for me is that Miles has a chance to get out of this offense, but if he's... But if you he's, don't want him to get out of this offense, well, do you? Well, the problem is, is, you know, Boston Scott's been getting goal line work, and he wasn't in there this last week. And that's what um, took him from five points to 20-something? What not, is it? Not necessarily, but it's not... It sucks. Seems like it, though. He goes down to the fucking goal line, and then Boston Scott comes trotting out, and Gainwell scored a touchdown this week. Yeah. Um, and Gainwell takes some of that away from him but if Miles is playing like if they recognize that Miles Sanders was playing really well and they kept rolling with him and if he's going to keep doing this kind of stuff and if he can be a guy who gets 15 carries and you know three or four passing you know attempts yeah. basically or catching attempts however you want to targets um you know I think I think I might I, th- I think I might go Miles Sanders there but it seems like you should go CEH but I think I'm sticking with Miles Sanders. I'm sticking with Sanders. Clyde. Let's Clyde. Um, see what I did there? No. I like <laughs> it. How about... You don't see what I did there? It was, it was Russell Wilson. He has this thing, this promo for the Broncos where he's like talking about riding uh, to a victory, I guess. I don't know. You should look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Can you shut his mic off? I wish I could. No, I can, but you can't. Juju or Miles Sanders? Miles Sanders. Miles. Fucking yeah. Juju's crushing me right yeah. now. So, so, so Just so I want him to be good, I but I can't will chance, him yeah. to catch a touchdown or reach a seat. He has no ceiling. We were talking about this before <laughs> the fucking mic's turned on. He, he has no ceilings. He's like Lil Wayne, but not in a cool way. Like There's yeah. no ceiling for Juju right yeah. now. It's all floor. There's fucking no, five for 50. There's no way you I didn't can. draft him to be Cole Beasley last year, you know, like... There's no way you could get Elijah Moore right now from Miles Sanders. Ooh, I like that. I don't think Moore really crushed it. He looked like no, he was he, about he to crush it. He hasn't crushed it all. He, he had two catches so early wanna, in that game. You want to get Elijah Moore I'm, for yeah, Miles Sanders? Yeah. There's no way that you could trade Miles Sanders and get Elijah Maybe Moore. Maybe right people now. are thirsty for running backs, and the reason he buys is not so? good on Elijah Moore. That. You would trade. Well, you don't like Elijah Moore. No. All right. So you would trade Elijah Moore to get Miles Sanders then? Yes. I want more. I would go that way as yeah. well. That's fine. How about Gabriel? <laughs> My son Gabriel <laughs> walks in. Uh, Dropped him a little. Gabriel, early. no, no. Stay. <laughs> Let the boy watch. He needs to learn. You talk about that scene of Eastbound and Down more than anything I, I've ever seen. I was hanging out with some editors of the... Uh, the uh, uh, Gemstones... Uh, Woo! show and asked them if there was going to be a reboot of Eastbound and Down. They said no. <laughs> they and I was like, no. I was like, are there any outtakes like that one scene? Like there's those outtakes of Ashley Schaefer. I started talking to them about it and they like, I started quoting it and they were fucking dying laughing like they hadn't really, I don't know. I guess they heard it, but it was <sighs> a long time ago. Let's ride. Needed that. Needed that. No Kittle? Or he got it? No, he didn't. He didn't get it. He didn't that get the right foot of, in. How does he not get the right foot it's in? It's right there. It's anyway, clearly. Go check out the outtakes from Eastbound and Down, Ashley Schaefer. They just happen to live in our neighborhood. Jason doesn't know that cool of people. It just, Whatever. It's just, I know plenty <laughs> of cool let's, people. Let's clear that up right now. <laughs> I know plenty of cool people. He wasn't just, you know, just hanging out with some of my Hollywood people. <laughs> Charleston's popping right now. Um... I had another one. What was I? What was I doing? Um, what did you guys have been Davis and Sanders? We didn't. Yeah, um, we got I, distracted. I, I'd go Gabe. I think. Gabe. Yeah, I, th- I think you have to go Davis there as well too. But all man, right, do you like not love Miles Sanders? Yeah, I mean. So if you're going Gabe, then you would definitely go Lazard. Or you would definitely. No, I think I'd still stick with Sanders. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant. Sorry. If you, if, yes. I have no idea what you're talking about when you talk <laughs> you about trades. You just not talk about trades. <laughs> you would you would not you would keep Sanders over Lazard. Yes. Just Correct. make it simple. Sanders or Lazard. Just do go or. You would keep you would keep no, Miles or. Sanders over Correct. Lazard. Sanders Correct. or Lazard. Correct. 
I still don't know which one it is. I want Sanders over Lazard. Got it. Me too. Um, Let me get that running back. Same answer with Dubs. Just war. oh no, I want Dubs. So you would trade Romeo Dubs right now? I for guess. You, I guess that's. I need more than Dubs, but yeah, I mean, fuck. Dubs is. Uh, he's probably gonna be without Rogers. It's a little bit of a recency bias hype with Dubs. I do love Dubs. I do think Dubs is a better fantasy dynasty asset than Lazard, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't think so. So let me get a little plus. Let me get let me like dubs in a but second. I don't think you can do that. I don't no. think you're I getting think that. You're, I think that would I'll be get the three back. Yeah, I don't th- I don't think you're getting anything plus. No. I don't I, I I wouldn't. You're holding Sanders? Um I could hold Sanders. That's a that's a that's a tough one for me. It really does seem like dubs is it's kind of emerging right now, and they fucking about had a ridiculous day. This oh past man, week. that he just um, the ball came out when he hit the ground in the end zone. Or it would have been like a the only thing that holds you back from from me smashing the Romeo side is is Aaron just, Rodgers, 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 Rodgers yeah. longevity, Ajie. and then what happens after that? Mm-hmm. You know, TBD. It um, ain't Jordan Love. Probably not. Uh, but you would think that the Packers will figure it out, but. That's probably just because they have the because <laughs> they have in recent uh, past. So, um, man, that's that's probably the toughest one for me. They haven't figured it out. They have. They've had two quarterbacks. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like Thirty it just, years. It seems like that's what I was saying. Like, it seems like they would figure it out because they they did with, and it's basically spanned over this huge amount of time. But it's, it was basically just one to another one time. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd would you trade? Let's do one more running back. Damian Harris or Ramondre for um, either one of those two guys for Miles Sanders or however you want. I would rather have Sanders over Harris for sure. Damian Harris? Yeah. I I think Stevenson too. Harris is kind of in the same position where he's going to be, you know, unrestricted after this year, I believe. Stevenson's close. Stevenson does have that allure. Stevenson but would have much more allure if we knew that he would be the guy in this offense once Harris was gone, but just that we don't know. Yeah, you still have um, uh, Pierre yeah. Strong and uh, what's that cat's name from South Carolina? I Kevin don't Harris. Kevin I don't Harris. think he's, he's really a, a thing. Squad, he's on the practice anything, squad, but, but I mean, they can't only carry so many running backs. I mean, they'll draft like three more next year in the sixth, seventh, eighth round, so... I know there's eighth no eight round? rounds. <laughs> that's the but that's undraft free agents. The competence compensatory picks. Harris is going to be an unrestricted free agent, and it would seem like. I mean, they were already floating trading him, and then James White retired, and then it seemed like that 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 kind of died. I just don't know that there was any market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Damian Harris. Every time he gets the ball, it fucking yeah, he's good, good, man. But all the all he's not a those, bad player. Both of those so backs are good. You know, and if he could. I want to say that it should be you should take the Ramondre side of this thing, but I think yeah, I'm one sticking, year younger with Ramondre. I think I'm sticking with Miles, but yeah, it seems like right now it seems like you should stick with Miles if you're trying to win. I mean, you're trying you should, to yeah, maybe if you're trying to like get improve your draft pick, you could. But Ramondre's been pretty solid week in week out, playing I mean, all the third down work. Yeah, they pull up the fantasy but, points but here. But Harris is getting the touchdown, so yeah, it's like yeah. I think he, Harris has even had maybe some better weeks than Ramondre, but yeah, the. the the usage is definitely up for Ramondre. But just coming out and riding Josh Jacobs through this game and letting him get better and better and maybe recognizing that, hey, the committee approach isn't the best approach when the best player is clearly the one guy and yeah. he can do everything that the other guy can do in the passing game plus more. Um, and, you know, if Josh Jacobs is going to get the passing game work, he was already leading the backfield in touches. He's ev- not every, getting a ton of the passing work. Every go. This game he did. Um, and it, it wasn't the worst. Um, he's 12th in targets, um, and that's with a filter of, um, let's see, what's the filter? 50% of 84 attempts, which is basically all the guys who were the guys who actually touched the ball, not factoring in the guys who were just, you know, kind of flying around there. But Josh Jacobs is, uh, had a career high in snap percentage here, RB seven on the year, um, uh, Pass game work saw a nice uptick the last two weeks, saw five targets and six targets. So if, if that's what we're seeing every week, that's 
that's the money in the bank. That's fucking that, money in the that's bank. A, that's a surefire RB one. Um, seventh in attempts with seventy. Fifth in yards, three hundred thirty-five. Eleventh in uh, yards per attempt. That's again in that number with the fifty percent filter on eighty-four attempts. Basically, just filtering out all the guys who don't touch. These are all the work more workhorse her, the work horses <laughs> guys. Um, third in yards after contact uh, with that filter. Sixth in yards after contact per attempt with three point nine four. Um, and second in missed tackles forced with twenty two. Uh, so wow, wow, Josh Jacobs, good player. What a surprise! Yeah, it's, he looked fucking awesome. Like he was seeing and hitting holes that you wouldn't find even if you did pause it right there and be like, <laughs> "See, I missed this all." Like there was no hole, and he just has that. He plants that foot in the ground and gets upfield every every week. He's got his jersey torn because that's all them boys can get a hold of. Right, and it and like he turns what would be because he's he's always falling forward and battling for extra yards. So you think, oh, this is gonna be a good three, four, five yard run. All of a sudden, he pops it for like ten or eleven. Like he just, and then he got loose a couple times. Like he looked fucking awesome and they're finally going to give him the ball like i'm sure you already said a career high and snaps this week like yeah. uh, only once i think i read that he'd ever had more than 80 percent of the snaps or in his career so like it's just like oh and guess fucking what you fucking won raiders you gave your one of your best players the fucking ball you fucking fed this workhorse and you threw it to him and you fucking won wow Amazing. like how fucking hard is that give this man the goddamn ball Apparently pretty hard. It's been he's been RB eight and RB thirteen and right now he's RB seven. Um, and one of those years he was I think RB twenty ish or eighteen ish, not not super high, but I think he missed some game, missed a decent super chunk high. of games. Um, <laughs> he feels so good when he jokes around. Just came watching this almost pick um, on the Monday Night Football game. That's what we're talking it's, about. It's it's just another guy who perennially got disrespected and once Zamir White came out and got the fucking touches in the in the preseason. And no, it wasn't even that. It wasn't Hall even that. Jacob, it was got Jacobs got playing it was Jacobs in the Hall playing of Fame in the Hall of Fame game. game. Oh, okay. But he was playing like into the second quarter of the Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah, then he game. didn't play for a while after that. Yeah. Then um, he didn't he rest with some, the rest of the some starters of the after that. Great fantasy pundit said, I'm moving him away down my board. I'm not touching Josh Jacobs. Cool, bro. Good shit. Good thing you're on Fantasy Pros and telling people what to do. Because that's awesome. That's good. That's that's good uh, Good shit there. Um, Probably won't see him bragging about that on the no. Twitters. Uh, look, everybody gets it wrong, but this, that's just a dumb fucking reason to judge. Like, you already just hated Josh. Usage. Right. Yeah. You already hated Josh Jacobs, and right. you just found another reason to drop him even lower. That's just... That's bullshit. That's just... That's... That's rookie shit right there. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Come on, man. Kind of like take going out on a limb to say that Josh Reynolds sucks. You know, why would you put yourself out there? It was Josh Reynolds season this week, though. Yeah. Oh, I start. Also, I, get rid of I got the a, season. I got a text from Riley yesterday, and it said, your Jared Goff, Josh Reynolds stack really killed me this week. <laughs> Things we thought Jared we'd never hear. Goff fucking murdered it with nobody good in his lineup. Like, when can I say, when can we say I was right? You can say it. Been right saying now. that you yeah. were right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't necessarily know what about, but Jared Goff Jer- fuck around I mean, get fifteen. We were top, top fifteen. 15. Josh yeah. Reynolds had a nice stretch at the end of last year when they were down a bunch of receivers. What? Yeah, it like, also helps when there's no one else to the damn ball but to. He was fucking good, man. Yeah. He was good in this game. I think he's a decent receiver. He's a be a nice three somewhere on a team. Like that's great insurance for them. Yeah. I think he signed a one year deal with them, maybe. Or was just kind of lingering around on the yeah. roster. Not sure what happened um, with him with him in Tennessee because he'd be he would be crushing right. there right now. I love Josh Reynolds. I was a huge Josh Reynolds fan, but that that was he played pretty well yesterday. Um, and again, almost had a second touchdown too. Got tackled at the one. Yeah, Trenton D. What up, man? Bateman or Josh Jacobs? What are we, uh, I'm assuming it's I'm redraft. Sorry. Nah, I'm assuming Trenton's, it's dynasty. Trenton's playing dynasty here. Uh, fuck it, give me Jacobs. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, fucking balling out. You're about to win with him. You're not like Bateman's look good on the few catches that he's had, you know? But the, the volume's just not there. The production, yeah. You, but with Jacobs, this is a bad week to ask me yeah. that. I mean, the reasons yeah. he buys on Jacobs yeah, through the fucking roof. Certainly. And, and I, it, I think I'd lean Bateman there, um, but, you know. You're leaning Bateman, really? Really? <laughs> hey, look, you know, Josh Jacobs played. Well into the first quarter of a preseason Hall of Fame game, so uh, you know, 
Give me Bateman. Get him off my board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I like what we're seeing from Josh Jacobs right now. It seems like, every, you know, last year they kind of settled in on Josh Jacobs and he just kept crushing. Um, this year, hopefully we're going to see the same thing. This staff settles in on Josh Jacobs. And because of what he just did, we'll see that week in, week out. And I'm sure there'll be some frustrating usage, just like there is with almost any other running back in the league. That's so not to named take that. like Saquon Barkley. But if you can just get a couple of pass catches and, and stay in the 10-point the floors yeah. and then have the 20-point ceilings, uh, yeah. now now we're cooking with something. And I think that's where Josh Jacobs should be. Um, I think, you know, I'm interested to see what happens next week after they just got their first win whilst riding him. I don't think you're going to see whilst. quite this usage again uh, as far as the amount of you know use he got here. Uh, but I, th- I buy think it's sell a, hold. What, what are we doing? I mean, this is this is a you can't buy after this week just like you can't buy Miles Sanders, Sanders after this week. Yeah. But it'd be a buy. It was been a buy for me. Yeah. Um, and if I have him, it's a hold. Um, not selling. I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna hang either. on to my running back because this is yeah. what you thought he could do if you like Josh Jacobs. This and he's on a year. He's again with the Miles Sanders unrestricted free agent unrestricted next year. Free agent, only 24 trying to this get season. some money. Somebody's gonna if somebody picks him up, you would think and pay him. They think they're gonna. You would think they're they're gonna use him. If you're gonna pay him ten plus million a year, yeah. Um, Shit, that fifth year option looking kind of cheap right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they didn't pick up his fifth year option, and that should yeah. tell you everything yeah. you need to know about yeah. him. <laughs> Or fucking crack shot analysis over there. They just gave him the highest usage he's ever seen in his career. You might as well if you're not going to re-sign him. Just that's what right. I Why, that's 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 Why is this a negative? Like, right. let's just ride him into the fucking ground and see you later. Right. Thanks for fucking nothing, nothing or everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Josh Jacobs, baby, let's go. Let's ride. I was gonna say it, but <laughs> you guys got anything? Else, anybody else you want to put up against Josh Jacobs? Hmm. I think I'm prepared. Uh, Josh Jacobs. You said this was the easy part. Why don't you put Josh some Jacobs guys up against or Miles Sanders? I think we did this already, but mm. oh, we did. Jacobs. Yeah, we did. Yeah, Jacobs. You Jacob. getting a, you getting a year? Jacob earlier. Jacob Johnson. Jacobs or ETN? Mm. I think right now you have to say Jacobs. Yeah, you have to say Jacobs, but I feel like my head's telling me to take ETN. But you could probably get a little bit something I mean, extra. Yeah. I would say Damian Pierce, but that's a no-brainer. I mean, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what, Damian Pierce? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You would trade a 23 unheralded, precious firstborn child, 23 first for Damian Pierce. So. Kareem Hunt or Josh Jacobs? Jacobs. Ja- uh, Hunt's also a free agent. Yeah, but he's like 27. You're getting three years younger? Like, give me fucking Jacobs all day. Khalil Herbert easy. earned a two for Josh Jacobs. Khalil Herbert and a two or Jacobs? Yeah. Jacobs. It's Jacobs. It's, t- it's pretty easy. Jacobs, Jacobs, Jacobs. <laughs> Fuck it. Give me Herbert in a second. All right. I like it. You know, kind of not... not all that different Montgomery in a contract year, Herbert may be taking over this offense. So I, I don't this I don't yeah, necessarily disagree. Get some bears in my life. J Rob, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like ET too much. Plus, did you know he had an Achilles injury? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who? Jake J Rob? Jacobs and a first for Hurt Javante Williams. I think I'll probably take a little bit of an overpay at this point. But yeah, I think it is probably an which overpay. on which side the Jacobs and Jacobs in the first side. Wow, really? I mean, we were having a discussion about a first for Javante the other day, I think, and I was like, "That's like a I definitely would do that because that's a deal cause compared to where you got him." AJ like, Dillon or Jacobs? I mean, we took we took we had this discussion. We, we did took have this discussion. We Jacobs, took Jacobs over Dylan over Dylan in our startup this year. Me and Matt. Does it still Dylan. hold? I mean, I sure think so. All right, they're like the same age. So, would you swap Dalvin Cook for if you have Dalvin? Would you downgrade? Back, to, would you downgrade to Jacobs for the youth? I would plus pull. something. Yeah, I need I'm a like little I'm, bit. Am I getting a little bit of a sweetener on can there? I, can I get a little sprinkle or something? A second? Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Actually, I have a team where I have Cook and Jacobs. So Jacobs in a second? For Cook? Oh, I'm taking Jacobs in a second. 
I don't know if it's that easy, but I don't if think you're so. trying to move off a of cook. I mean, if you're moving off cook, it's because you don't want to win. So you don't want to take Jacobs, you know, because Jacobs is going to help you win right now. So Tight it's kind of premium, a wash. Josh Jacobs or TJ Hawkinson. Mm, good week to try and sell Hawk if you've been yeah. frustrated with that motherfucker. Mm, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because Jacobs uh, Hawkinson's definitely going ahead of him in startups. Yeah, because like, you need a tight end, and in startup, the tight end is even more elevated. Yeah, and Hawk just balled out this week, but also top three receivers weren't playing. Top two receivers weren't playing, I should say. Top two and Chark, Trent and Deke. Uh, so I, I think I would, I think that's a coin flip. Uh, pro- Hawkinson's probably a little bit. <sighs> I don't know. What are you doing? Yeah. On which one? Hawkinson and Jacobs. I think the value's in Hawkinson, so I'm going to try and take Hawkinson and flip him. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably take Hawk. What about Kenneth Walker and Josh Jacobs? Um, I'll take Walker. I'm gonna, yeah, let I me f- get something extra. Let me get Well, I'd, I'd probably be trying to finagle a little extra with what I Jacobs is I'd doing right have now. I'd Walker there, too. Um, Curtis Sammy or Jacobs? Jacobs. Stop, Easy, stop, right? Stop, Easy. Stop. Christian Kirk or Jacobs? Jacobs. I think that's Kirk for me. This is a good week to make that trade. Because you can definitely go get Kirk with Josh Jacobs right now. I think I want the running back. Okay. I know I want the running back. Yeah. I know. It was me. <laughs> um, St. Brown, who's clearly terrible and, and <laughs> not going to be able to live up to the hype. Or, uh, St. Brown. Yeah. Of course, not even a question. I was just, just, God. I haven't got to throw in a St. Brown jab. Unless you're talking about equanimious, then I'm have taking it. whoever the other player is. There's only one St. Brown. You, you address, like five you address the other St. Brown by equanimious. Yeah. 